Good morning, everyone, and hello here from Geneva. Uh, my name is Peter Larson. I'm with the Environmental Governance and Territorial Development Institute at the University of Geneva. Apologies, first of all, for not being there in person due to changes in calendars and activities. It was impossible for me to be present at the Palais this morning, uh, something I regret uh, dearly, given the importance of personal interaction. However, grateful to have this opportunity and engage further in the conversation about how we can actually strengthen efforts to protect environmental defenders. I want to take a couple of minutes to briefly talk about lessons we have from the Geneva Roadmap Initiative and also a few points about what we can actually do from the research community side. So back a few years ago, uh, many of us got together, uh, civil society actors, environmental defenders, people from the conservation and the human rights community to talk about how we could actually work together and what kind of goals would make sense to really strengthen the protection of environmental defenders. There were four goals that came out very clearly. One was to reverse the tide and the attacks, uh, the tide of a marginalization and the tax. The second was to reinforce environmental rights, enable civic spaces and accountability. The third was about bridging initiatives, enhancing cooperation. And the fourth, really about breaking the isolation and ensuring effective access to protection of environmental defenders. Now, have we been able to make any progress on these four major goals? In some respects, clearly attacks continue, and in, in fact, many continue to be poorly documented. So in many respects, we have not really been able to reverse the tide. The, uh, the issue remains important, the challenge is there. If we look at in reinforcing environmental rights and enabling civic spaces, certainly at both uh, international and at the regional level, there have been a number of, of uh, new mechanisms and policy initiatives, as we've also seen earlier in this event today. Yet there's a far way to far way to go, and indeed, in many country contexts, the spaces are shrinking and the situation is deteriorating. And this again highlights the extreme importance, really, of of, of continuing this cooperation, which is not a, a one-time thing, but uh, but an area in need of long-term cooperation. In fact, if we look at actually how to secure access to protection initiatives. We also see that there's a long way to go. When we talk to environmental defenders across the world, many, first of all, are still below the radar. They're not being identified or indeed need to, to shy away from the public in order not to face challenges, uh, both personally and organizationally. So let's just say that the action goals today remain relevant, but progress has only been partial and much work needs to be done. Now. What can we do from the research community side? Let me come up with just three examples of things that, that, that we have been doing in our small corner of the world, um, together with uh, Professor Jörg Balsiger at the Institute. We have an international cooperation activity with colleagues from the International Institute for Law and Society in Peru, with Ateneo University in the Philippines, uh, Moy University in Kenya, uh, basically, co cooperative research on uh, mining, uh, the mining sector, a particularly dangerous and complicated sector for environmental defenders, trying to understand the dynamics there, supported by the Swiss National Science Foundation and its SPIRIT program. Another line of activity that we from the research community engage in concerns policy advocacy. We, we engage with policymakers, share insights and knowledge on a range of policy fields uh, on environmental defender issues, whether it's the environmental policy field, security, human rights or other policy agendas where the topic is relevant. For example, we have engaged a lot with uh, the IUCN, uh, its different policy arenas uh, such as its Congress, but also worked on documentation, trying to understand better the kinds of issues and challenges that are being faced by its membership, for example, resulting in the report called Conservation NGOs at Risk. Finally, of course, we engage in a lot of teaching and capacity building, whether it's through our, our own teaching programs or whether it's actually cooperation, for example, um, last summer with the Global uh, Diversity Foundation, its Summer Academy for Environmental Changemakers, where I had the privilege to teach with two environmental defenders together in a joint effort to document the issues and also explore ways of actually strengthening responses. 
So there's lots we can do from our respective positions. But finally, let me look forward, which I think is important why we're here as well together today. We see all the new mechanisms. We see the issue being recognized. We see the policy opportunities. Yet, we might conclude that not enough is actually being done, and it's often done too late. What do we mean by that? Well, we often start recognizing the issue far too late compared to earlier stages where actually there are opportunities to find alternative routes. Now, we need to really now take a hard look at what's working and what's not working in protecting defenders effectively. That's not done overnight. It varies a lot from countries, between countries, between regions. Uh, and I would just insist again here that this Geneva roadmap space is really a very important space to have regularly for exchange and lessons learned. And it's actually also a very good example where international Geneva can and does work. So in this respect, I just want to congratulate you all to really attend this event, make it work, and let's see how we can continue this process of exchanging and strengthening ways forward for the protection of environmental defenders. Thank you very much for your time.